Welcome to the 2025-2026 VEX IQ Robotics Season Mix and Match. I'm Jake Simons, Program Implementation Specialist for TechPoint Youth, and today my daughter Nora is going to be building Q, this year's Hero Bot. Now, as she goes through that process, we're going to stop at different subsystems, discuss what we discovered, talk about things that were difficult, things that were easy, and when it's all said and done, we're going to test it out on the field. Now, one quick note before we dive in. After you complete the build, you have to put some code on it for it to work. We'll walk you through that process as well. Let's dive in. All right, Nora, we just finished the first 77 steps of the HeroBot Huey for mix and match. The reason we stopped at step 77 was because that's the end of this subsystem, the elevator lift that's going to you know, grab the, the pins and lift it up to, to higher heights. Um, obviously, there are other subsystems that we're going to have to build at a later time, but this took us about 50 to 55 minutes to build that. Um, in those 77 steps, were there any parts that you felt like were hard or maybe that you made a mistake on? Yeah, so this gear and this metal shaft I made a mistake on because I kept putting it in the wrong holes, and so I had to keep taking it apart and putting it back together. And I think that that whole mistake probably took you a solid 10 minutes. So if, if you wouldn't have made that mistake, we probably would have completed this in about 45 minutes. Um, but yeah, what advice would you give to people who are building this robot, maybe to learn from your mistake, what would you tell them to do? I'd tell them that you should um, look closer and count the holes. Maybe zoom in at, at the pictures on the mm -hmm. 3D um, build instructions, just so that you can see exactly which holes you're supposed to be putting them in. Nice job. There was another part as you were building, you kept asking because the directions aren't super clear about it. It's around step 60, but this part right here um, does not attach at all. And it looks like in the directions you're supposed to attach it. You kept asking, where am I supposed to put it? What am I supposed to use to attach it? And I was like, I don't, I don't actually know. Just keep following the directions. And the directions ended up being right. And the reason that those aren't attached is because that's part of your elevator lift right? It cascades mm -hmm. upwards. And so you have your, your motor connected to your metal shaft, connected to your orange sprocket with gear, uh, sorry, with chains all the way up to this sprocket right here. And the cool thing is, is once it actually is activated, um, you can see, let's see, let's do that right there, how this actually works. So pretty neat mechanism there. Allows you to lift the pins really, really, really high. So there you have it. We're on to the next steps. Look how high that goes. That's pretty That's cool. High. We're on to the next steps. Just keep it up. Way to go, girl. Okay, so you are finished with steps 78 through 135. You just completed the next subsystem, the drivetrain. We already have the elevator lift. Now we have the drivetrain done, and I think there's only one part left, one subsystem left which we will finish in a little bit. But as you were building the drivetrain, let me ask you this question. Did you notice whether it was two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Um, it was four-wheel drive because the back wheel is connected to the front wheel because of the gear. Yeah, and, and I'll take it a step further here. And I want to point out that this um, motor gear is a 48-tooth gear. And it's connected to this driven gear right here, which is on the wheel. You can't see it probably, but it's behind the wheel. So 48 tooth connected to a 24 tooth gear. You do some quick math, 48 divided by 24 is two. Same thing going all the way to this wheel right here. Behind that's another 24. So 48 divided by 24 is two as well. These two gears are called gap gears. They do not count in the equation. They simply just fill the gaps to connect this gear to that gear. And so when, when we talk about gear ratios and we say a 48 tooth down to a smaller 24 tooth gear, bigger gear to smaller gear, that means this is two times faster than what it would normally be if you just have a shaft coming out of the motor. So this is going to be a pretty zippy robot, isn't it? In fact, it's going to be two times faster than normal. So that's pretty cool. Were there any steps that were incorrect when you were building this? I think they were all pretty straightforward. Right? Mm -hmm. Were there any steps that were hard? Anything that was difficult for you? Um, well, this metal shaft, I thought it, I, um, it was hard because I couldn't push it through the 
gear and um, the wheel. So I had to uh, like um, push it against the table to help it yeah, come and through. That's a quick tip too, right? Like if you're having a really hard, I mean, I saw your fingers, like your fingers had a little tiny hole in it and you were pushing really hard and it wouldn't go through. So then you pushed it against the table, which then was able to push it all the way through. That's a quick tip for you. So we are almost done with this robot. This is a pretty simple robot, straightforward. The directions are accurate so far. And the last thing we have, I believe, is the claw on the front of this elevator lift, which will pinch and grab the rings, pins. not the rings, that's from the pins. Yeah, from the pins, you're right. And then it'll lift it up using the elevator lift like this. And then you'll probably be able to open the claw to drop the pins and zip around with your drivetrain. So, so three subsystems, drivetrain, elevator lift, claw. Simple as that? Mm -hmm. Nice work. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, you did it, it's done, way to go. You finished Huey, the hero bot, the claw, the third subsystem, which is attached to the elevator lift, which is attached to the drivetrain. What did you think about the claw? Was it easy? Was it hard? Did it take you a long time? What are your thoughts? No, it was pretty easy. Pretty easy. Like it took steps 136 to step 186. The final step, it probably took you 10 to 15 minutes. Um, making sure that your cables are in the right ports, that was important. Um, but otherwise, it looked like you were, uh, it was definitely easy for you. And overall, I felt like the directions were super clear. I felt like uh, you did a nice job following those directions, pinching, squeezing in if you needed to, rotating the 3D directions. Um, did a fantastic job. This is one of the easier uh, hero bots that we've had. We've had hero bots in the past that have been like 300, 400 steps, and this was 186. So I thought you did a great job. The final step here is that we need to go to Vexcode IQ, the app or the website, go to file, open examples, scroll all the way down to Gen 2, and there's a Huey code that Vex has already made for you that you have to download to this in order for it to work. That'll be the next step for us. Once we get that downloaded onto this robot, then what do we do? Do you know? Test it. Test it out. We're going to test it out. We're going to see how the drivetrain drives. We're going to see how the elevator lifts. We're going to see how the claws grab. Is it strong enough to grab a pin or not? And we're going to test it out. I'm guessing that even though this is a cool hero bot, that it's probably not going to win you any tournaments. It's probably not going to qualify you for state. It's definitely not going to get you to Worlds or do anything at Worlds. And so we can't leave it like this. The engineer design process wants us to modify this. The engineer design process wants us to make this better than current. We shouldn't start the season with this and end the season with this. In fact, our next robot probably won't look much like this. We wanted this to be better. That's the engineer design process. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yes. Let's do it. Congratulations, you have completed Huey. Now, if you've already messed with the controller, you've probably realized real quick that the controller does not make the robot do what you want it to do. So what you need to do is go ahead and head over to codeiq.vex.com or the Vex Code IQ app. Click on Files. Scroll down to Open Examples. Make sure you're on second generation. Scroll down all the way to the bottom and you'll see all the previous year's hero bots. We're obviously going to click on 2025 Huey. And you'll notice right away that there are no strands of code on here. Just a sticky note with information. And that information is important because you should have put your two drivetrain motors in port 7 and port 12 of your brain. You should have put your optical sensor in port 1. You should have put your distance sensor in port 8. You should have put your claw motor in port 4, your lift motor in port 10, and your touch LED sensor in port 3. You should have done that based on the directions. The cool thing is, is that they've already done that for you in this code. If you click on devices right here, we can confirm that right now. You can see right here, the claw optical is in port one, port one. Drivetrains port seven and 12, port seven and 12. All of those match. Even if you click on controller right here, you'll see that they have already input what you do with the joysticks on your controller, what you do with the L up and L down on the controller, and the R up and R down as well. You can change those around if you would like. You can experiment with that, whatever's easiest for your kids, but it's already preset for you. 
click out of devices. All you have to do is simply rename this to Huey or whatever you want to name it. I'm going to save it to uh, my desktop here. I'm going to save it in slot one. If I have other code that I want to add onto the robot, I would, I would save it in slot two or three or four, all the way up to slot eight, and then you'll download it. Now you'll need to connect your cable to the brain, to your computer. You might need to uh, connect via USB, or if you're using Bluetooth, that's fine as well. And it'll walk you through that process. It's super easy. You might even have to update your brain. It might be outdated. So do that. It's easy. It walks you through that promptings. Once you have done that, this download button should appear. You simply click that and it is now in your brain under programs under slot one as Huey and then it should work accordingly. Have fun. This is really fast. This is two times faster um, because of the gears and it's four-wheel drive. Um, the back wheels are really slippery and the front is heavy, so that means there's um, no, not a lot of traction in the back. This is really slow. If we stick with this, I think we should make it faster by changing the gears. Now we're gonna test the claw. Okay. And you have to hold um, R down so it doesn't fall. If you don't hold it, it's just gonna fall. So close. I wish we didn't have to hold R down because um, it's really hard to drive around when you're holding it down. Oh. This thing is so fast, it's so hard to control. It stacks pins okay, but not great. And it takes a lot of time. Um, and the worst part is, we can't do anything with the beams, which we want it to.